Welcome to section eight, service management practices. The first practice here is change enablement. Note the term change enablement instead of change management or change control. Firstly, let us look at the definition of a change. A change is an addition, modification or removal of anything that could have a direct or indirect effect on services. Change authority. The person or group who authorizes a change is known as a change authority. The purpose. The purpose of the change enablement practice is to maximize the number of successful IT changes by ensuring that risks have been properly assessed, authorizing changes to proceed, and managing the change schedule. So there are three purposes here. One, maximizing the number of successful changes by doing a risk assessment properly. Secondly, after that, authorizing the changes if the risk is seemed to be manageable. And thirdly, managing the change schedule or the change calendar. If you look at the balance at the left, that is also essential. It is important to balance the beneficial effects of changes with the protection from adverse effect of the changes. For example, a change to a software application might have some benefits. For example, the performance might be better, the application might run a little better. On the other hand, it should not create any other issues during the change or after the change. For example, uh, if the change is going to take a long time, it may impact the usage of the application by users who may be waiting to use it. On the other hand, after the change, there may be some other side effects. For example, some other components of the application may be impacted. So it is important to consider all the benefits against all the negative impacts and balance them and obtain an agreement on what is a good balance. Note that in ITIL 4, it is change enablement and no longer change control or change management because changes need to be enabled rather than be controlled by a certain control board or an advisory board like a CAB, change advisory board. Though the CAB may be necessary in some instances, but having a CAB for reviewing all changes, it's not a good idea. Therefore, whoever is able to assess the change should do it so that it can speed up authorization of changes. Let us now look at the three types of changes with some examples. Standard changes, normal changes, and emergency changes. A standard change is a low risk pre-authorized change that, are, that is well understood and fully documented and can be implemented without needing additional authorization. Let us consider some examples of standard changes, meaning these are pre-approved, low risk, need not be assessed every time such changes are required because they are pre-approved, which means uh, examples like these are very valid. Life cycle replacement of hardware. Well, this is a change, but to replace it when it is end of life doesn't require approval because the hardware can be just replaced with a similar model. Adding storage as allowed regularly. Proactive replacements of disks before failure. Replacing of failing device with identical model and configuration. This can be pre-approved. No need to obtain specific approval to replace it because the device is anyway failing and replacing that with a similar model and configuration is okay. A standard environment creation, for example, a certain office, a standard office creation with a network connectivity and workstations, etc. Regular software patch updates. While there may be emergency software patch updates in case of a wider threat or some other threats, regular updates should be pre-approved and therefore standard. Changes to firewalls. If there is a security issue coming up, a certain firewall may have to block certain IP addresses and that should be pre-approved rather than having to wait for the approval, which may cause further damage to the business environment in that time. Domain name server entry creation. Server reboots can also be standard changes. However, note that because a server re reboot can st stop certain applications, it should not be a standard change. It needs approval. However, if the server is running in a high availability environment, for example, there is a backup system or a mirror or redundant system, then it should be okay to go as a standard change. 
Regular data loads can also be standard changes. However, specific data loads, for example, critical data migration loads, uh, need to be pre need to be approved and not pre-approved. Continuing with standard changes, they're often initiated as service requests, but may also be operational changes. Some of the examples we noted there are operational changes, but sometimes they can come in as a request from someone, as a service request. When the procedure for a standard change is created or modified, there should be a full risk assessment and authorization as for any other change, meaning when a new change needs to be considered as a standard change, then there should be a discussion on that, whether such a change should be a standard change or a normal change. And once it is decided that it is a standard change, then that procedure may be applied. However, if it is decided that it is not a standard change, but only a normal change, then the usual raising a request for change and authorization of that should be done. So for standard changes, the risk assessment need not be repeated every time the change is implemented. It is only done if the, the way the change is implemented is modified. Because if the implementation is done in a different way, maybe the same standard change may lead to some failure. So any changes to procedures for standard change implementations should trigger a relook at the, the change itself, whether it is a standard change or not for the future. Normal changes. These are changes that need to be scheduled, assessed, and authorized following a standard process. Note the word standard coming here. Let this not confuse you. The standard process doesn't mean it is a standard change. A standard process means it's a normal change, meaning even normal changes require a procedure or a standard procedure to go through the assessment and followed by authorization. Change models based on the type of change determine the roles for assessment and authorization. A change model is like a template. A change model could include a, a procedure for a certain type of change, responsibilities for a certain type of change, escalation mechanisms for a certain type of change, the structure of the change form as well. However, the change form should be the same for all type of changes, but depending on the type of the change, it may trigger different procedures for authorization and for implementation, for testing, for backing out the change, etc. So a change model is nothing but a kind of a structure to handle different types of changes. And if this is pre-done, then it is easier to process normal changes in a faster time. Initiation of a normal change is triggered by the creation of a change request or a request for change. Note that standard changes do not require a request for change or a change request because those are pre-approved. Emergency. These are like normal changes, except that they need to be handled quickly. These are changes that must be implemented as soon as possible, meaning expedited or speeded up. For example, to resolve an incident or implement a security patch. Note that emergency changes may not require documentation to be completed immediately before the change. It may be done afterwards after the change is implemented also. However, it is essential that the documentation is maintained. Otherwise, there may be no information about the change afterwards. For example, during a review or a lesson learned or a retrospective discussion. Emergency changes should also be tested. Because if an emergency change, though it is urgent, testing will make sure that the change implementation will be most likely successful. Imagine an emergency change going in with approval, but not tested. So just like normal changes, emergency changes should have documentation, should be tested, should have an implementation plan, should have a backup, a backout plan, etc. Change schedule or a calendar. A change schedule is used to help plan changes, assist in communication, avoid conflicts and assign resources. Let us firstly consider examples of normal changes and emergency changes. Normal changes, moving from in-premise servers to the cloud. This needs to be authorized and cannot be pre-approved. 
critical data migration from one system to another needs to come through a change request form and will be authorized after assessment only. Similarly, feature changes to an application requested by a, a customer will go through a formal standard change mechanism, uh, sorry, a normal change mechanism. Emergency changes could be a security patch or a network isolation, which means uh, they might be, usually emerging, emergency changes happen to prevent security issues or incidents. Example of a change schedule or a calendar. Having such a calendar or schedule of changes allows to assign resources or understand resource allocations to various changes, understand when certain changes are going on and uh, whether they have been approved or not. And it's good, uh, it's a good uh, item to report to stakeholders on a regular basis. For example, this shows the a weekly change uh, calendar for a certain week, and it lists three changes during that week. And the timing of those changes, the outage information for those changes, the ownership, as well as the status of that change. 